Hello and welcome to This Week in Science, the weekly science show where I will highlight one or more interesting stories in science that I've found this week. And in today's video I've got two stories for you, both about frogs. The first one is about the giant prehistoric frog Biasmopho, and the second story is about some of the smallest frogs that we know of, the tiny pumpkin toadlet. We'll start with some research on the bite force of the Beelzebufo, and if you're interested, I did do a video about this previously. Click on the card to find out more about this prehistoric amphibian. Researchers from the University of Adelaide have estimated the bite force of Beelzebufo by studying modern Pac-Man frogs, which are similar in many ways. The Pac-Man frog, or horned frog, from South America gets its name from its characteristic round shape and large mouth, much like the video game character Pac-Man. Dr. Mark Jones, a researcher at the university, says that unlike the vast majority of frogs which have weak jaws and typically consume small prey, horned frogs ambush animals as large as themselves, including other frogs, snakes and rodents, and their powerful jaws play a critical role in grabbing and subduing their prey. The study found that horned frogs with a head width of about 4.5 centimetres have a bite force of around 30 newtons, about 3 kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds. A scaling experiment that compared bite force to head and body size calculated that large horned frogs that are found in tropical and subtropical moist lowlands of South America, with a head width of up to 10 centimetres, had a bite force of almost 500 newtons. This is comparable to reptiles and mammals of a similar head size. If one of these frogs bit your finger, it would feel like balancing 50 litres of water on its tip. Based on their scaling relationship, the researchers calculated that Beelzebufo would have a bite force of almost 2,200 newtons. This is the same range as mammalian predators such as wolves and tigers. At this bite force, the Beelzebufo would be capable of capturing and subduing the small and juvenile dinosaurs of its environment. Now we go from some of the biggest frogs ever known to some of the smallest for our second story this week. Pumpkin toadlets found on the leaf litter of the Brazil's Atlantic forest are some of the smallest frogs in the world. An international team of scientists from Denmark, Brazil and the United Kingdom have discovered that two species of these tiny orange frogs cannot hear the sounds of their own calls. During the mating season, most male frogs will signal their presence and find a mate. But when the hearing of these tiny frogs was tested in a laboratory, it was found that the part of the ear responsible for hearing the high frequencies was vestigial in these species. This is the first time, say the scientists, that the communicational signal persists even after the target audience has lost its ability to detect it. The pumpkin toadlets are brightly coloured, active during the day, and are known to use visual signals. It's thought that visual communication has replaced acoustic communication, but if this is the case, it would be expected that the ability to produce the calls would be lost through evolution as it's no longer required. Vocal calling is also potentially dangerous. It can attract predators and parasites and uses up time and energy. It's speculated that the movement of the throat as the male calls could be constituted as a visual signal, in which case the call itself is merely a byproduct of the true signaling behaviour. Like many brightly coloured tropical frogs, pumpkin toadlets are highly toxic, and this could lower the risk of predation during calling. Studying the toadlets further will advance our understanding of the mechanisms underlying the evolution of communication systems in animals. And that story came from the University of Southern Denmark. Thank you for watching this week. Links to the articles covering today's stories will be in the description of this video. And don't forget to click on the card to find out more about the Beelzebufo. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and consider subscribing for more. Well, I hope to see you next time. So until then, stay curious, ask questions and keep learning. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.